61A, lecture number 23, announcements. Midterm 2 is on Monday at 7 p.m. The topics and locations have been posted. Here's the course website. Click on Midterm 2. You'll see the locations, various places around campus. They are almost the same as for Midterm 1, except for we moved 16 people from one room to another to relieve overcrowding issues. You'll find a study guide for Midterm 1. A new study guide will be posted very soon for Midterm 2. I just need to proofread it. The topics that will be covered are everything through Chapter 2 of the textbook, except for notable omissions such as Newton's method, implementing lists and dictionaries, dispatch dictionaries, propagating constraints, and implementing classes and objects. Particular emphasis will be given to mutable data, object-oriented programming, recursion, and recursive data such as linked lists and trees. Please understand how those work. If you want to prepare, a great place to start is the past exams. There are also review materials and guides. The past exam from fall 2013 actually has an entire walkthrough, which you can find linked from the review guides page. So, if you want to understand not just what the answers to problems are, but how to solve them, take a look at these resources. You are allowed to bring one handwritten two-sided sheet of notes that you create yourself. The two study guides will be provided for you. As I said, the emphasis are on these four topics. There will be a review session on Saturday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m that will go over some of the solutions to the practice midterm that was released earlier this week. Check on Piazza to find that. In addition, HKN is holding a review session on Sunday. The exam includes content up through last Wednesday. Today's content is just review and examples. Nothing new today. And let me give you some tips about studying for this exam. One is that the discussion handouts are filled with practice questions. When you went to discussion, maybe you didn't get to them all. Go back and you can find questions about particular topics. I do recommend that when you study, you study one topic at a time, instead of jumping around. Now one exception to that is that it's a good idea to take at least one practice midterm all the way through, so that you get the experience of taking a midterm that's under time pressure. This helps you identify which topics you need practice on and helps you practice the skills for taking an exam, which are much like the skills for solving any problem. When you read a problem, you want to figure out what kind of problem it is and what techniques might apply to it. So, if you're defining a function that changes its behavior over time, that should indicate to you that you need to create a mutable function using a non-local statement or some mutable data structure. If you're creating a function that processes a tree, you're probably going to be writing a recursive function that recursively calls that function on each of the branches of the tree. Recognizing these patterns can help you get started. When you actually go to solve a problem, don't try to jump right to the solution. Instead, understand what the problem is asking and work through the preliminaries first. There are only so many kinds of problems I tend to ask. One is what would Python print? And there you're meant to understand the rules of execution as well as be able to trace the execution of a program. Doing this all in your head can be error prone, so write down what's happening. You can even use environment diagrams to do that. Environment diagrams are another kind of question I like to ask about. In that case, most of the rules for environment diagrams you learned for midterm one. If they didn't all make sense at the time you took midterm one, go back and review. You'll even find that there are videos of Yuri Park, one of your TAs, solving the entire midterm one so that you can see how she thinks through these problems. And that might give you some 
guidance about how to solve environment diagrams. And finally, there are questions about implementing a function that does some behavior that's specified by the question. In that case, it's a good idea to develop a strategy of how you're going to solve the question before you try to translate that strategy into code. You could even write that down. If you're creating a recursive function, say what you're going to do in the base case and the recursive case, and then try to figure out how to express that using Python. By breaking it up into these two steps, you might find that a little bit of extra work in writing down the plan for how you'll solve the problem leads you much more quickly to the actual solution you want when you need to backtrack a little bit or change your solution. I hope those tips are helpful, but the most important tip I can give you is to practice, practice, practice. Watching videos is an okay way to review, but it's more important that you actually try to solve some problems. When you attempt to solve a problem and you don't find the answer, go look up the answer to see what it should have been. If you don't understand why the answer is different from what you got, try hard to understand it. That's the moment in which you'll learn something you didn't know before. And if you can't figure it out by going back into the readings or watching a video, ask on Piazza and somebody will answer with an explanation of what's going on. Next Monday there will be no lecture, next Tuesday and Wednesday there will be no lab, and there will be no office hours during the beginning of the week because we will be busy grading your exams. <laughs>